welcome to Sculpture Studios. A tremendous project in the works here. That's tremendous. I promise you now that's not the last project related pun that's going to be in this video. No beating around the bush, you've had fair warning, okay? Creating something nice and large, studio filling, and relatively straightforward as far as complexities go. No complicated metal work, no awkward elements, and certainly no problem whatsoever with the communication from our client John McDonnell. Exactly the kind of project we wanted to come in at the beginning of this year. Polystyrene carving, glass fibre blanket coats, a little artwork, but something the entire team can all tackle here at the studio and nothing to outsource for. Now don't be fooled, it potentially sounds like I'm downplaying the project, but trust me, there's plenty of work for our full team to be getting on with. It's just nice to have something that, in the long run, is big and sculptural, and relatively straightforward with no foreseeable problems. We've been sent some reference images of effectively what we're going to be recreating, as this has already been made elsewhere. Now, I originally thought that TBD Branding was a bit of an odd name for the company, before I clocked that this actually meant to be determined. The company this is really being made for is Salesforce, who, you know for the life of me, I can't work out what they actually do, but I do know that there's a heck of a lot of people involved from multiple factions in numerous countries around the globe. They hold annual seminars and events all around the world, and this giant tree stump is something that the Salesforce team in Paris for 2022 is looking to have recreated. This organic woodland feel is very much the aesthetic of the company in these events, so this is all going to be in keeping with this woody vibe, incorporating their cloud logo in the centre of the design. You look stumped, Aiden. Oh, very good. Barking up the wrong tree. There, there we go, that's enough of that already. <laughs> <laughs> right, come and have a look at this. Here we are, we're making the model here. We've gridded the whole thing up quite nicely. And just to give me sort of some sort of reference, I'm scaling it on top of there. And then I can work out my actual block sizes to minimize the waste on the polystyrene. And then we can recycle as well. And also we have a side profile of the whole thing like this and it just helps us to work out the amount of material we need for when we grid up the whole thing. But just to translate this, this is going to be around 7.2 metres long. Mm. If you don't know what 7.2 metres long is, it is this. About 2 metres max in depth, and then... Oh, and 4 metres tall. 4 metres tall. 4 metres will probably hit one of these lights. So eventually we're going to have to move this into the centre of the room, to the apex. Um, but that is how large this is going to be. Before we get started, we need to finish up on the other projects that we're waiting to have collected. Behind here, we've had 12 blocks of polystyrene delivered, 8 by 4 by 2 foot billets. And this is all now ready to start blocking out once we've got a little bit more space freed up. But that's where we're at. We're not going to tell you how long we've got to do this. The deadline is far, far too short, but we've had far, far too little work over the last couple of years, so uh, here we are. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck. This is a challenge. You're going to be working over the weekends and everything trying to get this done. But hopefully, fingers crossed, we don't let the client down. And hey, it makes a good video. <laughs> I'm not sure about that. <laughs> to maximise the use of each of our polystyrene blocks, aligning everything before cutting so that we end up with minimal waste. Not only the cost of the blocks themselves that need to be considered, but also how much space the offcuts take up in the studio. It's worth considering before going ahead and cutting straight away. Please reveal 
Look at that, magic that is. <laughs> God, I hope you don't need that anymore. <laughs> magic, what destruction. So here we have the main bulk of the top half of the shape, which to be honest, is where the bulk of the material is. Imagine this, it's twice as high, this is gonna be up there. And down the bottom, it's two extra bits that then form the doorway. So the bulk of the material takes place on the top. So we've cut the peripheral shape up the top there. And this gives something Aiden to work on over the course of the weekend. He loves a bit of carving, don't you Aiden? Yeah. I love Polly. <laughs> Look at him taping it back together. Brilliant. But um, that's where we're at so far. Nice bit of carving work over the weekend for Aiden. A lot of the time, fiberglass is the bread and butter of the workshop, but really, it's the carving that Aiden loves most. The bulk of the shape has been cut using a hot wire and Aiden's now using a shorter wire so that he can go solo and start taking off the material to carve the overall form. It's tricky when you can't work on the entire piece immediately in one section. Here we've naturally got to have this at ground level so that we can work around it. So this does take a bit of foresight to know what you're cutting and how it will eventually look all together. It's a little bit noisy in the workshop, but that just means there's a lot going on. Over here, we've got the full blocked out section. Obviously the tree trunk is currently laying down. On the floor here, we're trying to create an accurate representation of the cloud cutout, which we know to be the client's logo. So that there, we've worked out the center points of each of the, uh, the circles, marked out the radiuses as shown in the drawing. So now we're just creating what we call a skin template or a skin cutout on the styrene and there we have the cloud logo so that when we tip this back up once all the foam sets we can put this along the front and uh, we can use the hot wire to cut out an accurate form for the uh, for the open door section and that is where we're at so far plenty of polyurethane expanding foam to go off to join all of the polystyrene together but uh, it's looking good so far Well, I did say it would probably touch the light. Standing the entire piece upright, we can now see the full scale of the project properly for the first time. Significantly less bulky now that it's taken up less floor space and with the majority of the off-cut material now taken away. Oh, thank you Ruth, that's lovely. Going to work with nail brushes, the form is being honed down even further to blend the top and bottom halves together. When Aiden's happy with the overall form, the entire piece is sanded down and groove lines are being mapped out to carve into the surface for the bark texture. A few of these bark lines will double up as split points for the individual fiberglass panels. This saves on any ugly horizontal cut through that the original version had that doesn't really make sense to create and unfortunately unattractively draws the eye. Going to a bit of a groove here, Aiden. Yeah. I think you're barking up the wrong tree. I knew that was coming. I knew <laughs> that one was coming. <laughs> no, you've had that one. You can't have the same one twice. We're about, what, five days in yeah. since starting the project. Everything's been blocked out of polystyrene and all been foamed together. Yeah. But we are getting to the root of it now. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> That's going up with a little bit of serious content for a yeah, change. Sorry. 
Uh, we've got the client John coming down on Friday of this week. Today is Wednesday. Aiden's just going to be finishing up the master carving, getting all the uh, the grooves and the bark as true to the concept image as possible. Uh, the concept image was just a bit of an interpretation of how they want it to look. We're hopefully going to make it look a little bit better if we can. Um, for starters, all these horizontal lines that you can see going across here where the foam is, these aren't going to be visible by the time it's come to being fiberglass. So unlike the original version where they had a big horizontal line going across the middle where it's broken in half, we're going to be following the natural groove lines, have a split line around there, a split line around there, and a couple of flange points to pinch the whole thing together. But, uh, but John's coming down on Friday to check the master carving to make sure that we're all good to go and uh, then we can get on to the next part of the process. We're going to be covering this in glass fibre and resin, um, class O rated for fire eggs. We can then pop the fiberglass off of the job um, or, or the polystyrene will be easier to pull out, that's pop. for sure. Pop it off, what? Pop it off. Yeah, no, it was, it's not going to be a pop off, but you know, we call it that and the uh, the video magic will uh, will make it look better than it actually is. But yeah, the, uh, the, the foil helps to remove the polystyrene from the back than if it wasn't there. Um, but that is where we're at so far. We'll get a bit of footage once John comes down. So here we're joined by our client John McDonnell from a company called Mr Tasker Limited. Now whether John is Mr Tasker himself or not, he certainly knew everything that the task required. Here at the studio our clients vary from artists to art directors, designers, homeowners looking for something personal and many many more, but sometimes the easiest projects and the best people to work with are those that are either in some form of trade or builders. John knew from a practical point of view what the project required, was already planning ahead and thinking about breaking the sculpture down, transportation, assembly on site, and there were no extra inputs from him to unnecessarily put his own spin on the job itself. It's been a straightforward process from the word go, so thank you very much John for such a smooth project. Now that the master carving has been approved by the client, we're breaking the sculpture down into manageable size pieces. This is so we can work on everything easily at ground level, but these will also be the manageable sized pieces that will just be glass fibre shells. For a protective barrier, we're of course going over with our secretly, I mean, secretly sourced sticky back tin foil. This protects the entire polystyrene form before going over with any resin and glass fibre. A popular request and something that's become a bit of a mystery at our studio, we do get a lot of comments regarding our foil, but those who have sent us an email may just have found out a little bit more information, so perhaps give that a try. To save some time so that we can crack on early Monday morning with all of the glass fibre work, I've popped in over the course of the weekend to finish foiling all the other pieces and to generally give the workshop a little bit of a clean up. Everything that you see going on here at the studio takes time, and the videos might often glorify or certainly gloriously skip some of the more time-consuming tasks, but there's something great about keeping the workspace clean, coming into a tidy studio on a Monday morning at the beginning of the working week, so it's always well worth taking the time to do. Though this is literally a clip of about half an hour's worth of tidying, there's something strangely therapeutic about the space clearing, and it's all part of the process. Now that everything has been protected with the foil, we're going over with glass fibre mat and class O rated resin for indoor fire regulations. If this was simply a hard coat shell for the polystyrene, we could get away perhaps with just a single layer of glass fibre. But as the polystyrene is all being removed from the back, we need to give this a sturdier build up to be able to support and hold its own weight and keep its form. Down the sides of each piece, we also need to bump up the thickness a little more so that we can create strong, boltable points along all the flanges. With all of us jumping on this, we can get the majority of the glass work done in just a couple of days, and we'll find out later, once the polystyrene is removed, whether there are any places that need extra reinforcement. The edges are trimmed down neatly, and the entire surface is sanded down to remove any sharp points. 
this just makes sure all the pieces are prepped properly before we go over with any resin flow coats. All of the polystyrene on the inside now needs to be removed. We're using hot wires to get rid of the majority of the bulk material, but ideally we need absolutely everything to come out, which means a little bit more manual labour. Remember when I said the videos skip the more laborious or time-consuming tasks? Well, there's no other way to get this out apart from go at it. Don't feel bad for Russell. We've all been on this all day. He's not the only one. What's the matter, Russ? Can't hack it. <laughs> Well, 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 here we are. So everything has been carved, cut out, all the polystyrene removed, all the foil on the inside removed as much as possible. Took a bit of time, but fortunately it wasn't too sticky. And here we've just laid them all out, and this is the first time we've seen them all go together as fiberglass pieces, where we've uh, had to carve a few different bits off of the job. We're gonna have to make a couple of amendments once we get everything together but we're just going to try bolting all of the flanges as best we can for the moment just to see how everything butts up and see what amendments need to be made. Once we've done all the construction side of things, like all the bolting together, making up the join lines and the seam lines, we can then go over with flow coats of resin, by which case we've got quite a few barrels arrived already with a brown pigment added and that way we can begin with a nice solid foundation for the artwork which Aiden's going to blow in with the airbrush later. Made quick progress on this now that the studio's got nice and clear. A few jobs going out this week. Cow at the back there included. An ornate chair, which no doubt will be in another video. Yeah, now that we can actually get around the job and we can all get on it, everything's kind of speeding along a lot better. And this is the kind of work we really love. Something nice and big, bold for the video, and, uh, and hopefully a happy client at the end of the day. Yeah, those lights are really getting it on this job. We're keeping as much as we can at ground level at the moment to work on the bolt points for the middle section and then we'll start getting things up in the air. Where these clamps are currently holding the job in place, we're creating some wooden panels that we can install. This way we can pinch the fiberglass elements together securely without the fiberglass wanting to crack or the bolts wanting to pull through. These will be bonded and laminated permanently in place with holes that will allow strong 10mm bolts. While some of us are working on the construction side at the back of the job, Aidan's getting to work on the pretty stuff on the front. Here you can see the flow coat resin being applied, with the pigment providing the base colour for the artwork. The flow coat softens out the texture of the fiberglass mat, and as a tree and not needing a super polished or car body finish, the remaining texture is suitable for the project. Though we're not really expecting the back of the job to be seen by the public, we still want to keep everything nice and neat for the client, so we're blacking out the inside. Not that this is really one of those above and beyond moments, but it's just these final finishing touches that show we're trying to take care of every aspect of the project.
Well, there we go. That's pretty much the construction side, all done and dusted. Time for a little artwork now from Aiden. Following the natural lines in the wood for where the sculpture comes apart means that already the break points aren't so obvious. We're just going to mask this a little more by giving all of the other lines a little artwork treatment, deepening the dark points, and just generally making the whole sculpture feel that little more theatrical. sent some finished photographs to John, who's happy for us to deconstruct, ready for transport to come and collect everything from the studio. This is then off on its way to the 2022 Salesforce event in Paris. Being made from glass fibre, and providing this is looked after, this can be erected, deconstructed, and used time and time again for more events in the future. It's amazing that when we create such large items here in the studio, just how small they look when they're set up in even bigger locations, but you guys got to see up close the real scale and what went on behind the scenes. We'd like to thank John McDonnell for coming to us with the project, and for a smooth process from start to finish. We look forward to any future projects you have in the pipeline that you may want to bring our way. Please feel free to leave any comments below as they're always appreciated and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell for our latest videos. You can follow us on Facebook and Instagram via the links below and for all of our true diehard fans out there, you can now become a patron of our studio. All of our support contributions go towards the creation of these videos so if you enjoy our content, you know what to do. Becoming one of our credited patrons means you'll be featured at the end of our upcoming YouTube projects like these guys here, so visit the Patreon link with this video to show your support. However big or small, it's greatly appreciated from all of us here at Sculpture Studios. Thank you very much for watching.